Hello everyone, my name is Yoros Panyotakos and I'm going to talk about the Schroeser Street of Cryptography and revisiting MPC bounds in the proof of work era. This is joint work with Juan Garay, Angelos Kejas, Rafael Ostrovsky and Vasily Zikas. Secure multipart computation has been studied since the 80s in what we're going to call the traditional MPC setting. In this setting, the number of parts is fixed and their identities are known. Parties are uh, synchronous secure channels. The adversary is unbounded or probabilistic polynomial time. And parties may share some setups such as a CRS or a PKI. Setup functionalities can be further separated in two categories, public state setup and private state setup. Both functionalities sample a string from a predetermined distribution. Now, in the case of public state setup, uh, everyone learns this string. And as an example, you can think of a CRS, a common uh, random string. On the other hand, in the case of private state setup, different parties learn different parts of, this, of the sampled string. Here, an example is a PKI. In a PKI, everyone learns the public keys, but no one learns all the secret keys. Obviously, a uh, public state set of functionality can be emulated by a private state set of functionality, and thus, a uh, uh, public setup is a weaker uh, set of assumption. This distinction between uh, public state setup and private state setup uh, was further highlighted uh, in the MPC literature. So, first, we know that uh, assuming a private setup and that the majority of the parties is honest, uh, MPC is possible. On the other hand, assuming a public set state setup and that uh, one third of the parties can be corrupted, it has been shown first that broadcast uh, is impossible by a paper from Borderdin in 1996. And since fully secure MPC implies broadcast, MPC is also impossible in this setting. This uh, result can be further strengthened by assuming private channels, uh, the existence of enhanced structure permutations, uh, or a random oracle. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying anything, an anything new here. This, all these results were shown more than 20 years ago. Now, in the last 10 years, we saw the development of uh, proof-of-work-based blockchain protocols, such as Bitcoin. These protocols typically implement uh, a transaction ledger, which is a primitive related to broadcast, and have been shown to be secure, assuming that the majority of the parties is honest, as long as uh, they have the same computational power, and as long as they have access to a fresh uh, CRS setup, that is a CRS that uh, becomes known to all parties, including the, including the adversary, at about the same time. Now, this uh, result seems to be contradicting uh, uh, the impossibility result we mentioned before, uh, since a fresh CRS is a, public, a form of a public setup. To aid confusion, all these results were shown in uh, what is called the permissionless setting, where communication is not authenticated and the number of parties is not fixed. And uh, similar results have been shown by restricting other uh, resources parties have, such as uh, space. So the question we pose here is the following. Uh, uh, does this uh, MPC impossibility result we mentioned before still apply in the traditional MPC setting under this uh, resource restricting paradigm? Now, while there has been a lot of attention in resource-restricted cryptography in the last 10 years, it in fact has a long history. Uh, Merkley in 1976 uh, used moderately hard functions to do key exchanges, and uh, Dvorak and Auer in 1992 used them to uh, mitigate spam attacks. Uh, Time-released crypto was invented by River Samir and uh, Wagner in 1996. And a bunch of papers uh, tried to use this concept to deal with fairness uh, issues. Now, in all these works, uh, many different resources uh, were considered, such as sequential computational power, parallel computational power, space, and stake. Uh, here, we take a more abstract approach and consider uh, network access as our uh, resource. In more detail, we model restricted network access as a functionality wrapper. 
This wrapper has three properties. First, probabilistic access. That is, uh, a new message is sent with some probability p. Second, bounded access. That is, at most, q send attempts are allowed per round. Finally, free forwarding. That is, if I receive a message or have sent a message before, then I can forward it to any other party for free. While uh, this filtering wrapper can wrap different types of net networks, in this work we will focus on authenticated ones. Next, to see if the filter network functionality is an appropriate abstraction of real models, uh, we implement it in the proof of work setting of Balderzer, Maurer, Chudi, and Zikas. That is, assuming an access bound random oracle functionality, a fresh CRS, a global clock used for synchrony and authenticated communication channels, we uh, implement the filter network functionality in the UC uh, framework. Next, uh, I'll give a high level description of uh, our protocol. Our protocol is, is uh, inspired by uh, Bitcoin proof of work mining. So whenever a party tries to send a message M, it queries the access bounded random oracle with the CRS, a message, and a nonce value. And if the resulting hash is smaller than some target, it sends the message, the nonce, and the hash value through the authenticated network to the other uh, party, to the designated party. Now, the fact that uh, parties have a limited number of queries per round uh, budget to the random oracle uh, implies that the number of messages of new messages they can send is uh, bounded as the uh, filtered network functionality dictates. In order to resend the message now, uh, they just uh, have to forward these three values, the message, uh, the nonce, and the has. And obviously this uh, forwarding is free in this implementation. So what we did next was to revisit the broadcast and possibility result of Porter Dean. A protocol implements broadcast if it satisfies three properties. First, validity. That is, if the sender is honest, then all parties uh, should decide on uh, the sender's input. Second, agreement. That is, all honest parties should decide on the same value. And finally, termination. That is, all honest parties should eventually terminate. Now, the possibility result we mentioned uh, assumes that a third of the parts can be corrupted. We'll briefly describe this, the, the attack strategy of the impossibility result for three parties, A, B, and C, where A is the sender sending bit B, and one of them is corrupt. The impossibility result proceeds by defining three scenarios, sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3, such that no protocol can satisfy all broadcast properties in all three scenarios. In the first scenario, party C is corrupt. It drops all communications with party A, while in the eyes of B, it acts as if A was broadcasting 1. In reality, in this scenario, A is broadcasting 0, and thus by validity, since A is honest, B should output 0. Symmetrically, in the second scenario, B is corrupt and drops all communications with the sender. In the eyes of C, B acts as if uh, A was broadcasting 0. Again, in reality, A is broadcasting 1, and by validity, C should output 1. Finally, in the third scenario, A, the sender, is corrupt. In the eyes of B, it acts as if uh, it was broadcasting 0. In the eyes of C, it broadcasts as, uh, as, uh, as if he was broadcasting 1. Now, uh, it's, we, can, we can show that uh, in the eyes of B, sigma 3 and sigma 1 are distinguishable, while in the eyes of C, sigma 3 and sigma 2 are indistinguishable. Hence, in uh, sigma 3, B and C should output the same uh, values they output in sigma 1 and sigma 2 respectively. Hence, they should output 0 and 1. And thus, agreement no longer, can ho no longer holds. Now observe that in the third scenario, the adversary simulates two honest parties, A broadcasting 0 and A broadcasting 1. Our idea is to use the filter network functionality to make, to make this strategy infeasible by making uh, simulating parties costly. Assume now that parties have access uh, to the filtering, uh, filter network functionality. 
And for the moment, assume that p equals 1, that these parties can send new messages with probability 1, and they can again, again uh, send at most q new messages per round. Now consider the protocol where the sender sends uh, the first round q different messages, each containing its input b, b. Honest parties can run uh, this protocol with uh, no problem since they can send q new messages per round through the filtering functionality. On the other hand, A in scenario 3 of the attack we described before has to send q messages for uh, simulating uh, broadcasting 0 and another q messages for simulating broadcasting 1. Ob obviously, this is possible since uh, he can send at most q messages per round and thus he cannot launch this attack. We can generalize our protocol for any notable p. Uh, the difference is that uh, we take a bigger uh, set of rounds that has to do with, that depends on the parameters p and q of the filter network functionality, and we change the number of messages the sender has to send. Then, using a turn of bound, we can show that with overwhelming probability, A cannot launch its attack. Concluding, we saw that there exists a protocol such that the broadcasting possibility attack is not feasible anymore, even though the adversary can corrupt a third of the parties. What it seemed like a contradiction is explained by the fact that the adversary only has limited resources. So having shown that the uh, bordering broadcasting possibility attack does not uh, uh, apply in the resource-restricted setting, uh, we, our next goal is to uh, implement secure MPC with honest majority in public setup. As our first step, uh, we uh, implement a registration functionality that allows parties to register uh, keys, like in a PKI. We're going to talk a bit more uh, in the next slide about this. Uh, assuming uh, the filter network functionality and signatures. And because all our work is on, in the UC uh, framework, we next take advantage of all the results to uh, achieve MPC. So first, uh, due to a paper from Canet in 2004, we uh, implement the certification functionality, a functionality that allows to link messages to parties from starting from the registration functionality uh, and uh, the signature functionality. Then, due to a paper from Hirt and Zikas in 2010, uh, we can uh, implement the broadcast functionality starting from the certification functionality. And finally, due to a paper from Kramer, uh, Damkar, Zibowski, Hirt and Rabin in 1998, we can implement uh, the MPC functionality starting from broadcast in the secure channels model. Um, now, all these implications hold against adaptive advers adversaries, hence our, all our results are against adaptive adversaries. And, uh, our final the theorem looks like that. We can implement uh, the MPC functionality in the UC setting, in the UC framework, as assuming uh, that we have a filtering network functionality, uh, a signature functionality, secure channels, and the global code functionality, and assuming uh, that the majority of the parties is honest. Um, moreover, uh, by taking advantage of the result we mentioned before, that is that we can implement the filter network functionality starting from a bounded access under Oracle and a fresh CRS, we uh, get a corollary uh, saying that we can uh, do MPC starting from uh, the bounded access of the random Oracle, signatures, and the fresh CRS. Next, I'm going to talk a bit about the registration functionality. The registration functionality takes two uh, commands. First, uh, submit command together with a string that each part can issue once. And when issued, the registration functionality stores uh, the submitted string together with the part, the identity of the part that submitted it. And secondly, a retrieve command that when issued, the registration functionality uh, response contains a list of identities and register strings. Now, there have been some previous attempts to implement the functionality. The first one by Katz, Miller, and C in 2014, and the second one by Adrihovic and Zibovsky in 2015. Unfortunately, these attempts uh, are not good for our goal. F 
first because uh, there the keys, the register strings, are linked to pseudonyms and not to uh, uh, the actual identities of the parties. And secondly, because security there is standalone in the standalone framework and not in the UC one. Now, our protocol builds on the approach of uh, Drihovitz and Zibovsky. Next, I'll give a high level overview of our protocol for P equals one. That is, uh, messages are sent through the filter network functionality with probability one. So in the first round, parties generate a signature key pair, let's say SK prime, VK prime, and send Q distinct messages uh, containing the verification key, v VK prime, through the filter network functionality. This way, uh, it's established that the adversary cannot create more identities than the number of parties it can corrupt. Secondly, uh, they sign uh, with uh, the secret key the string they want to register together with their identity and send the, the message, this message through the uh, uh, authenticated network. This way, they uh, link uh, the string they want to register with their identity. Now, if we stopped here, uh, the protocol would not be secure because uh, uh, the adversary can easily break the uh, consistency of this uh, registration uh, functionality as follows. It can, for example, uh, sign uh, with his secret key two strings, S and S prime, and send it to different parties. Then uh, these parties would, uh, would not agree on the string that this, that, uh, this party, PI prime, for example, as registered with the uh, functionality. So in order to deal with this problem, we use some form of uh, graded agreement so that parties agree on a common uh, key set. I'm not gonna go in more details about this. Next, uh, as before, we can generalize this protocol to any noticeable P by having se parties send more messages in a bigger set of rounds that depends on P and Q. And finally, uh, while the filtering functionality we implemented earlier uh, assumes a fresh CRS, we can implement a weaker uh, form of this functionality based on a traditional CRS where the adversary can um, learn the CRS string a lot earlier than the honest parties. Concluding, we saw that resource-considered cryptography uh, once more uh, challenges long-established uh, MPC impossibility results, and that's why it deserves uh, further, further research. Uh, we have identified uh, a couple of interesting directions. First, uh, implementing the filter network functionality by restricting other resources that parts may have, such as space, as well as unifying older works under this uh, uh, filter network uh, abstraction. Secondly, revisiting other MPC lower bounds and seeing whether they sti still hold in the resource restricted uh, setting. Thank you all and keep safe.